Kerry Lake, let's talk about the Journey on Podcast Summit. <laughs> okay, as much as you want. It was <laughs> such an amazing event. Unbelievable. You know, the first, you know, coming into it, we weren't, we weren't sure how it was going to all go down. And, you know, I was, I was, for me, great would have been everybody shows up, the presenters all show up and do their business and the the, the live stream works. That's what I thought was going to be great. And then <laughs> you were the first presenter up the first morning. Right. And you came in and absolutely rocked it. And towards the end of your presentation, I was kind of thinking, oh, well, that's going to be the highlight for the, <laughs> the whole thing. Everybody <laughs> else is going to kind of look bad compared to you. Well, yeah. It, it was funny going in, even even before it all started, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I went in knowing that we're all there because we love horses, right? Horses organized this whole thing and brought us all together because they touch our hearts in so many different ways. So that, and plus knowing how your interviews have gone, you know, on the podcast leading up to this has been so much about honoring who people are as individuals and what, what makes them tick, not just what do they do in the world, but why are they doing what they do? And you give people space to share from that perspective, and you're going to get a bunch of hearts coming together and just celebrating what we love together. So coming in and being the first speaker, I felt completely honored. And I thought, like, how, how can I really highlight the fact that this is about what we love to share in the world? It's all about the love. So... Um, I'm just really happy people, the feedback I've gotten about it, um, about my talk is, it blows my mind that people really were touched and, and received that this really is about what we love and sharing that together. Like no walls between us. Let's just have a blast. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, your talk was absolutely amazing. But then the funny thing was everybody else bought their A game and oh their my God. their their A openness and their A vulnerability and it was just yeah. amazing. That whole first day just it just kept adding and adding and adding. By the end of the first day we were like, what the hell was that? And I remember the second morning <laughs> yes. I got in the elevator to go down sometime in the morning and the elevator door was open and there's Kerry Lake standing in the elevator and I stepped in the elevator and you looked me in the eye and you said, Dude. Dude, no, but you, you said something before that. You, we walked into the elevator and you looked at me and you said, what the hell just happened? And that's when I said, dude, dude, that's like the only explana or exclamation that can encompass all of the feelings all at once. Dude, yes, we're on yes, the yes. I was on the 17th floor. I'm not sure what floor you came from, uh, but we're on eight. the 17th floor. I hop in and I say, what the hell happened yesterday? And you looked at me and you said, Dude, and then we just rode down together in silence. <laughs> yes, we did. That With was big fat smiles on our face. <laughs> that's all it was to say. <laughs> yes, and that just perpetuated for the rest of the the weekend. You know, and I heard so many people after you shared that on the you know uh, the next morning. I could hear walking around people just looking at each other and going, "Dude, dude, dude!" So it was a thing. So much fun. So much fun. So after it was all over, what were your, what were your thoughts about the whole experience? Um, really that together, all of the presenters and all of the participants, we created something that didn't exist before. You know, um, my friend Kay had my favorite quote about the whole thing and she said you know in in the equestrian community there's so much us versus them but here at the summit there was only us and for this many people to come together sharing open vulnerable listening uh, welcoming each other at tables at lunch and everything um, all of those hearts coming together amplify the space of welcome excluding nobody and really what happened is we created something that's far more than the sum of the parts. Everybody, I felt, was, was equals, you know? I mean, yeah, some of us were on the stage. Some of us were not on the stage. But it really was an honoring of what's common to all of us that is whatever we love and recognizing that we're not alone. So coming out of the, coming out of the summit, I felt 
so blessed to have been a part of it, to be a part of it, to be a part of this ripple that now exists where people can't deny anymore that there is a purity of love in the among humans in the equestrian world. And we all uh, illuminated that. We created that space and lit it up together. It, and I feel like we're just getting started, honestly. Yeah, I'm excited to see where this whole thing goes to. You know, you mentioned a number of times horses in there, but, you know, the thing I really got out of all the presenters was, was, and I talk about it quite a bit in the podcast, but, but the wisdom of the natural world. Yes. You know what I mean? You know, horses are part of the natural world and I, th I think that's why they help transform us, but it's not because we ride around on them and we enjoy doing that or any of that sort of thing. I think in order to get along well with them, you have to surrender to the natural order of things, which is not the secluded, you're over there, I'm over here, we're separate yep. from each other yep. uh, type mentality, but it's the it's that whole connected mentality. I think for me, that's the bigger thing I got out of it. I, it's so beautiful. So beautiful. It acknowledge, it, uh, what you're talking about asks each of us as humans to acknowledge the part of ourselves that already does know harmony with the natural world. It's already resident, right? But we've been conditioned and bullied and bludgeoned and s educated to, uh, to function on a different set of priorities. And so what, that's what I hear you pointing to right there and talking about is, hey, let's, let's rediscover and kindle a new relationship with the part of us that is already well connected, well in touch, and and naturally looking to harmonize with the natural world, physical natural, for the spiritual, the elemental, the etheric. It's all part of it. It's all part of life existing. And w humans are now coming to the place where we can ask this question of how do I re-include myself in that which is common to all of life? You know, that bit where you said about, you know, we've been bullied and bludgeoned and conditioned or whatever, kind of reminds me of when Jane went off in that intuition <laughs> intuition um, uh, group panel discussion. Oh. When, when, the, when the question was, how do, you, how do you find your intuition? And Jane took the microphone and just yeah. went off on. Yes. Basically, the world for taking our, you know, for, for civilization taking our intuition away from us. And it was just... I mean, that was day three and, you know, at the start of day three, I'm thinking, oh, this, this cannot <laughs> keep going on. And then the presenters on day three were amazing. Amazing. And then Jane and Rupert and Leslie in that intuition discussion yes. just brought the house down, I thought. Yeah, I basically lived it, like demonstrating this is what it looks like when you're not in the way of it, you know. I mean, Rupert showing up and, and dancing I mean, it doesn't really get much better than that. It, this is what it looks like when you don't filter, when you don't try to control and worry about everybody's comfort, but you say, you know what, here's my heart, and you're going to be comfortable or you're not, but here it is. This, that is what nature does. Nature does not control itself, right? Nature perpetuates life. And, and yeah, it just watching people become that space, become that expression, it's absolutely priceless. It is absolutely priceless. And you can't really say it was a, a crescendo from beginning to end because, like you keep pointing out, everybody fully showed up. So, I mean, it was like 23 fireworks shows and, and we just got to sit there in awe the whole time. Yeah, you know what it reminds me of is Tyler, my son Tyler, he, you know, he's a, he's a musician, you know, and we went up to San Francisco a few years ago to see Slash. So yeah, some, some Miles Mar Kennedy is a singer. So Miles Kennedy and Slash did a, a concert up there. And we get to go and see Slash. And, you know, Slash is an amazing, amazing guitarist. But he did these two at least ten-minute guitar solos mm -hmm. during the night to where, you know, he does a guitar solo and about three minutes in you're thinking, that was amazing. It's going to finish here in a second. And then five minutes in, he's still going. <laughs> and then seven minutes in, you think, this can't go on any longer. And yeah. it just keeps going on at that 
that level to where, you know, when I, when I got to see Slash play the guitar, then I was like, okay, I've now seen someone, it's not about the guitar, it could have been a cello, you know, I've seen someone just lose themselves mm. in what they were doing to where they were just, yeah, they were one with the, the universe sort of thing. And that's kind of what every presenter was like at that. It didn't get better. And it yeah. didn't get worse. You you started off with a bang and it just stayed there the whole time. It totally, totally. It, you know, when I'm listening to you talk right now, it's making me think, you know, it's an opportunity for people to adjust their expectation. Um, like, there's, it, I think it's common for people to relate to this scale of better or worse. It goes up, it must come down. Well, what if we're changing that? What if there isn't a up and down anymore? What if we're just like here it is this is the space we play in this is what it feels like this is what it sounds like this is what we share this is what we talk about and it, it, you don't ever have to fall from a high of having your heart touched and your heart opened and your mind opened it just expands and you have a new conversation and then oh then we point it over here oh and then let's talk about this what if we're changing the paradigm of how we relate to learning, to relating to each other, to what inspires us and what we create in the world. You know, it, it doesn't have to be an up and then down. It just, it can be a perpetual awesome. Yeah, and I think the perpetual awesome was not the people were being awesome. I think it was people were being open and, and, true. and vulnerable mm -hmm. and, and had the conversations that depends who you hang out with are probably not normal conversations and and i think that's what was so special about it. that's what made it so wonderful is yeah. everybody brought their vulnerability and yeah. and i think you know a lot of that lies with the people who came to listen Absolutely. were also very, very you could you could feel like this is a, a room of 270 people and it's a safe space to be whoever you really are. Nothing can come through me as a presenter, you as a presenter, everybody that was there. Nothing's going to come through if there's nobody to listen, right? So one way that, I, that makes sense to me is we listen each other into being. So, I mean, just think about what it feels like when somebody is there listening and they don't need you to be different than you are, but they're all in with whatever you are. It, it, it invites you out. It invites you to just find what it is I actually f want to be sharing. And so, yeah, absolutely. The 250 people there, the 1,000 people on the live stream, everybody from a quantum place it, who is going to listen to it in the future. Everybody is listening us into our own expression. It's the greatest gift. Really, I, I really feel like listening is, is the greatest gift we have to offer one another. Listening without judgment. And it's what the animals, it's how the animals showed me, you know, that's what they offered me. But, but yeah, without the people present, without the people asking the questions, and typing in, oh, this is probably a stupid question, but, you know, I had to ask it, and then it turns out, you know, 500 other people wanted, wanted to ask that same question, right, without people asking questions and then showing up really curious to listen, not for a correct answer, but to listen for whatever's there. That is a paradigm I, I want to be living in and facilitating any way that I can. It's love in action. L that listening is love in action. And I think that's what we all did with and for each other at the summit. Just, it's such a beautiful opportunity. Yeah, it is definitely something that we want to try to replicate in other areas of our life because it mm. is just, yeah, you know, I think you started out with love and Rupert was the last presenter. He ended up with talking about love. So, yeah, and I think that, I think that, um, yeah, that open-heartedness and that love was just so apparent the whole weekend. It was undeniable, undeniable. I mean, even if somebody 
did go in feeling protected and defended and all that stuff, y- you couldn't could, you couldn't deny the openness in the room in the whole hotel. I mean, the, the hotel staff <laughs> were were walking up to different people throughout the weekend saying, "What are you guys doing? I just want to come sit next to you. I'm I'm going to sweep really slow so I can hang out with you, and you know, so I won't get in trouble. I'm still sweeping." but I just want to hang out with you guys. It's this frequency, this awareness and, and sharing with this openness, it changes the physical world. This, this is what changes the world. And really what it takes is share what you love and, and go hang out with other people who do the same. You know, it's a pretty simple formula. And, and we got to do that together. It was just gush, gush, gush. It's so, so beautiful. It's so beautiful. And yeah, like I said, I feel like we're all kind of just getting started um, on a whole new foundation of, of where we can share from and who we can share for. Yeah, it was amazing. So thank you for being a part of it. Oh my God, thank you for inviting me. I'm like the luckiest kid in the world. So thank you. Thank you.